on, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, you are able to, I mean, we're able to capture on camera those who are able to come on camera. Let me read this out to you from the report, the, the, you know, the report I saw earlier. Uh, they said, travelers panic over Lagos Ibadan. I wake kidnappings. Or your Ogun go after gunmen. They are going after them. That's a punch report. They said, I'm going to read word for word and I'm going to jump some if they are really not relevant to what I'm about to do or say. So fears are mounting over recent attacks by kidnappers in the Ogun your state axis of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway with three reported cases, no, three reported cases recorded between January 8th and the 17th. Some drivers and commuters who regularly ply the route told our correspondents during the week that they were worried by the incidents which, according to them, had become rampant since December 2021. Penultimate weekend, a Toyota Sienna bus heading for Lagos from Ibadan was reportedly attacked by kidnappers who suddenly emerged from the bush at Onigari, end of the expressway, and started shooting repeatedly. A commercial driver, identified as Uluwato Sin, Aruwa Joye, was killed in the process and five passengers abducted. While another victim, one Ibrahim Tiamiu, was also shot in the thigh. One of the passengers was said to have narrowly escaped. Operatives from Oyo State Police Command, anti-kidnapping squad, and the, I mean, at the toll gate, blah, 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 blah. It's relevant. So it was said that the kidnappers contacted the families, I mean, the family of one of the five abducted victims, a female, and demanded 30 million naira ransom. It is not clear whether the victims, whether the victims had been freed or rescued. Not clear. Also, last Saturday, a Nollywood actress, Bing Kwe Akintunde, shared how she and her daughter had a close shave with kidnappers along the same Onigari axis. On their way to Lagos from Ibadan, narrating the encounter on her Instagram page, the actress said the gunmen dressed in military camouflage shot directly at vehicles plying the expressway. She wrote, in quote, Let's be careful on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. I escaped the bandits' attack around 5 p.m. this evening. After Onigari on my way to Lagos, they were shooting at all the vehicles coming from Ibadan. They were like 10 in army uniform, shooting, in, I mean, shooting directly at us. God saved me and my daughter. I can't believe this. Like, they were shooting directly at us. She was surprised. Like, terrorists are shooting directly at them. She was only, probably she only heard about that or read about that happening in Zamfara. But oh, no, I do not Lagos Express. So she didn't believe it. She was like, like, you know, like, seriously? They were shooting directly at us. Where are we going in this country? Broad daylight attack. Still surprised with exclamation mark. God came through for us. I turned back, followed one way, and alerted other drivers too. Just help me thank God for my life and that of my innocent daughter. We are back in Ibadan and Elvi, but in shock. Thank God for your life, actress. So, the following day on Sunday, hoodlums also donning military uniform abducted seven wedding guests at the Ishara, I mean, at Ish, sorry, at the Ishara Ogun State end of the expressway. The victims had attended the wedding in Ibadan the previous day, January 16, and were returning to their base in Lagos when one of the vehicles carrying them broke down on the road. The, I mean, so one of the victims, Falahon Akinshola, told this newspaper that they were attempting to tow the 40 vehicle when the kidnappers struck in the morning. He said, of the seven persons abducted by the gang, three of them were freed as the hoodlums demanded 60 million ransom for the others. I mean, for the others, yeah. He had said, unquote, says, the kidnappers were all dressed in army uniform and commanded us to enter the bush. They were more than four, as there were some of them inside the bush. They took some personal belongings and set some of us free. 
I was part of the people that were released, and we were told to go and raise 15 million naira to rescue the release, I mean, to secure the release of uh, each of the remaining four victims. We are to raise 60 million naira, and that is why we are seeking help from Nigerians. As these kidnappers said, they would waste them if they didn't get the money. After we regained our freedom, we called 911. 911, wow. Wait, I'm coming back to that anyway. So we were driving back to Ibadan when we met some metropolitan policemen and also reported the case to them. But we were told that the case was not within their jurisdiction. We were referred to the Ishara Police Division. We later reported the case there and got to note that the divisional police officer had mobilized about 25 policemen to the scene of the incident. These kidnappers have been sending threats, threat videos, showing us our friends in their custody. That's what they do. So Akishola said on Tuesday that remaining four victims were eventually released after payment of 7.5 million Naira ransom. We were the ones who raised the money alongside the company my friends work for, among others, he said. Now, that's the situation. Oh, I don't have to read more. You know now, you see the picture. So it simply means that uh, for those that have managed to report, eh? They are just to tell you how close the danger is. If you are living in Lagos, normally you feel unconcerned. But watch this. Then you probably should feel concerned. When you don't do your own go, they go say, ah, see, you think saying wise. You see, you raise the rope, they put another top slippers. Full loaded, full loaded magazine. No, this has not full loaded. They don't use them. With uh, one uh, color. That rifle is not safe. Second one. Wait, wait. Oh, you ah. know. I see the camera in the buy. All oh, this one, mostly in the police, go find out. I see the one. Jesus that rifle is not safe. This one, this one. I see, I see, I see, I see that rifle is not safe. <laughs> so. If you still think it's about the cows, on this program, my callers have uh, once, uh, well, many times told me about uh, the areas we are actually not looking into when, it talk, when we talk about this invasion. We know those who are in the forest. We also know those who are actually gathered and they're uh, grouping like uh, the normal terrorist cell where you have uh, some known and some unknown faces, names, buying land in Yoruba land, and then uh, using the uh, Dangote truck to ferry these uh, faceless people without identity down to Yoruba land. And they, they, they put them on those lands that some of our, our brothers and sisters back in Nigeria who have access to those ancestral lands, I'm talking about family lands, have sold, sold them off without considering the consequences of what this has become. Now, there was a time, well, not, far, uh, not too long ago, just about a week or so, Right, a village somewhere in uh, uh, Ogun State where um, Dangote, you know, there's a Dango, Dango, Ibeshe, somewhere around there, yeah. Dangote has bought uh, probably bought the almost uh, half of the lands of uh, the entire area, and then uh, they have these uh, Fulani settlers, uh, which we don't know where they brought them from, right there. And guess what? Since that moment, the insecurity in the entire axis has been like. Uh, Hell until they killed uh, the ballet of that uh, of that uh, place. Well, that is an area that some of some people said we have not been paying attention to. Let's talk about the one that we can see. Some of you still think this is about cows and the rest. Yeah, no, it's not about cows anymore. It is more than that. Whatever you want to make of it, just know that it's more than the it is more than the cows. So somebody was saying that. Uh, they called, well, in what I read, they called 911. Emergency number. See, I'm a Yoruba man. And then, uh, born and raised in Yoruba land. Grew up as a Nigerian. 
And since the day I was born, till I grew up and get to know what is left from right, I don't know Nigeria emergency number, but I know a singular emergency. If, if they ask you, what is Nigeria emergency number? For example, if you come under attack when terrorists try to grab you and you need to alert the police or anybody, tell me, what is the Nigeria emergency number? Or let me say you have some health emergency, right? You walk into the room and you find your, uh, maybe your uncle or your dad or your mom, so, you know, having a, a cardiac arrest and the rest of that. So what would be your emergency number? Of course, don't let me just make it hard for you. We know that, uh, well, there could be there could be emergency numbers here and there, but the number one emergency number for we Nigerians is that, especially Yorubas, is that when you rush outside the house and you, you, you scream, you won't have to say that two, three times. It is an emergency. Everybody will know that it's an emergency. Among those that will come, yeah, you finally found one that will likely help, you know, in a way. So there's nothing like call the police, call the emergency number until I read this report today that they said they phoned 911. When I was growing up, our emergency number is when a child is convulsing. If you're having convulsion, your mother, after grabbing you and realize that you are, you are becoming like she can't handle it anymore. She's not going to phone the emergency number or the, you know, the, what do you call it? H -M -I, -R, I don't know, emergency room, ER. Abi, once she drops you or carries you like that outside and says, Help me. The entire street, everybody will come out. So you have no emergency number to call. That is why so many of people, many people just call on God at, around that time. The insecurity in Nigeria, as terrible as it is, has put you in that uh, vulnerable position. The same vulnerable, vulnerable position that uh, the people of uh, northern Nigeria have been under when they came under the attacks of these terrorists. It's difficult to fight terrorists when those in your government are actually terrorist apologists. Do you understand that? So as a Yoruba man, as a Yoruba woman, it is actually like foolish to scream, Nigeria Egba Wao, Buari Eposo, Tinumbu Eposo, and all of those things, because they can't. If you don't help yourself, Sunday we will said we will defend ourselves, we will fight them, we will push them back, and we will do this with or without the support of uh, the government of Nigeria. But that turned out to be, a, you know, a, 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 a big uh, a big move that caused the lives of innocent people that shouldn't die in the first place and then put the rest of you in that bracket of those who are traveling Kaduna Abuja Expressway the same way they have to say God, I'm going to Abuja now from Kaduna is the same way you probably would need to now start praying when you want to leave from Ibadan to Lagos is coming home, is coming home. The insecurity is coming home, is coming home. Is home already. You will begin to feel it. Every denier you denied from last year, you are about to experience it. And don't, please, let me break your heart a little bit. Yes, Yorubas, we defend ourselves. Some of you are trying to wait it out. Once Boko Wari and gang are no longer there, maybe the next person coming is going to allow you to defend yourselves. When you don't even have a say on who is coming next, a demented and uh, worried, a demented uh, breeding mannequin called Boko Wari couldn't help the people of Kasina. He couldn't help the people of Daura. They are living as refugees. 
not just uh, in different other states in uh, northwest or northeast and everywhere they scattered to including outside nigeria if anybody is telling you or selling you the bobo wait for tifnumbu or wait for a yoruba man to be your president maybe these things will go away they are deluding you and you are deluding yourself look look at that mirror you are not even sure if you will make it that far you see the economic ruin that the Fulani terrorists brought upon us, right? Completely protected and defended and kind of guided by the criminals in government. You can't have terrorists in government and expect the terrorism to disappear just because they are no longer in government. What they have done is what they have established. They call it Takia, taking over government, entrenching the jihadist ideology, and this can outlive them. It will outlive them. It can shut a bandu fake pastor Ruga that they are also propping up that he should. Uh, it's going to be better than Bokwari and gang forgetting the fact that he is uh, body and soul with this same murderous uh, government. So the point here is this. The people who brought you to this stage, a stage where initially you are living in denial, initially you are living in disbelief initially you are living in there uh, it's impossible it will never happen in yoruba land so the reality of uh, god my mother in heaven my father in hell and every other person you want to call on to come and defend you why politicians are telling you wait it out buari will soon be gone how many of you will probably make it that far at the end of the day jihadists in your government scary isn't it saboda kyautata zato zuwa ga jama'ar da suka bukaci ai tunatarwa akan wannan al'amari din babban abin da ya fara zuwa cikin tunani na zai iya yuwa nayi kuskuren tunani shine yan uwa ahalin sunna da suka bukata shine mutanen taliban da suka rayuwa afghanistan allah ya jarrabi ahalin sunna da dama a duniya da kaunar su allah ya zayyana mutane da dama da ikon allah mutun tasu da musfatan alkhairi saboda alamomin alkhairi da ake gani tare da su baya ga wannan kuma a wani janibi sai aka samu wasu jama'a daga cikin kafurai western wall ba su da target a duniya sai ya bata su a idan yan uwan su musulmai hatta ma idan kafuran ta bangaren jingina musu abin da ba su aikata ba people who have allegiance to taliban who have allegiance to al qaeda they now control Nigeria. Do I come out of him? Tell Muna, look, Allah came more than the hatta could in the key and you mother to the photo of the Don't just really quite a quite a barma book. I don't say the other ruler. I'm a hatta one now. Back at the call of my name. They are near the other day. Say they call it the ruler to Allah. I said the most human. Okay, Mata in the Kubima. Mumtika in the Swedish. Barma book. I don't just really as a key. I did not just really call for tons of high being ever a dinny bunny a jiva. Suraka hatta wannan Allah ya kai mu da wannan Gregorian date kalendar arna da ke jikin kudi Allah ya ce wa ma kataluhu wa ma salabuhu walakin shubbiha lahum na an kashe Isa alayhi salam duk wannan ba ma bukatan sa kuma in Allah ba mu dama duk za a gusar da shi insha Allah ta'ala insha Allah ta'ala one day your calendars in Nigeria will not be the calendar you have now they call it the gregorian calendar is going to be the islamic calendar and one day now that's the people who are in your government the reason why oloye sunday will be considered as a, a terrorist and wanted and then uh turuji a terrorist uh kingpin you know there's a guy called turuji is the fulani terrorist kingpin from uh shokoto well, I think he's from Niger. He's a very popular guy like uh, Shekau. Very popular with these uh, governors that you see today. Tambuwa, uh, Bala Muhammad, uh, this other one, Buni from Yobe, this uh, Matawale from uh, Zamfara. He's their friends. All these places where terrorism actually like uh, flourishes in northern Nigeria. Now they said they are declaring the guy wanted, well, no, they didn't declare him wanted. They said they want to kill him. However, we have been told that uh, his own uh, bodies, his own uh, agents and the rest of them, they are moving down south. You are in. 
for a long ride. So the offer of uh, Oluye Sunday Boo will still possibly be your final take, our final take, when everybody finally uh, tastes uh, from the pudding, they say from the pudding, yeah? It's going to be served and everybody is going to feel a taste. So yeah, insecurity is increasing in uh, Southwest Nigeria, Yoruba land. The busiest uh, road, the busiest expressway in the entire West Africa, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, is about to turn to Kaduna Abuja Expressway. Now you're about to sense it. And I don't think you will be waiting long enough until Buhari is gone. Because you may not be that lucky. It is democratized. Bubuwala Maje. Oh, Bubuwala Maje breakfast. Asikotoni kanukumajete, ototoni. 